Nancy Pelosi is awful. She's just so awful. And you know what's funny is that I've, I've got several segments a few months ago where I was actually like, eh, she's not so bad. I'm actually kind of lukewarm because she was resisting the outrage and the impeachment saying, calm down. And I'm like, well, you know, she's pretty corporate moderate. I don't like the corporate establishment 30 year incumbent people, but she wasn't that bad, right? Not that bad. No, not, now she's insane. She's awful. She's spiraling out of control and everything's falling apart because the Democratic Party has lost sight. They have no leadership. It's the end. Take a look at the screen. You must win the Electoral College. Pelosi warns 2020 Democrats against leftward lurch. Oh, really, Nancy? Is that true? You think the Democrats are going too far left and you must win the Electoral College? My oh my, what a great point to be made. I agree. People in middle America who are concerned about the economy, you need to make sure you win their vote. And then you told all of the centrists to embrace impeachment. How centrist Dems learned to stop worrying and love impeachment. But it's a huge risk. And I think, I think the answer shows that Nancy Pelosi has completely lost control of the party. She was trying really hard to resist the impeachment stuff for obvious reasons. I think now they're looking at data and betting that impeachment can help them. But I'll tell you what. Joe Biden, okay? L- l- listen, listen, this is important, okay? Joe Biden is leading the pack in, in the latest polls and in the real clear politics average. Do you know what that means? I want you to really think about what Joe Biden represents. How much money has he raised? Uh, what, what, what did he recently hope to reinstate the Paris Peace Accord of 1973, ending the Vietnam War or something like that? Um, I wasn't alive, forgive me. Joe Biden recently talking to a crowd turned and walked towards the screen, apparently not knowing where the crowd actually was. Joe Biden's Iowa State Director doesn't live in Iowa and hasn't campaigned there in like seven years. Joe Biden has no idea what's going on. And for some reason, Joe Biden's leading the pack. I'll tell you why. Most people don't care. They're not paying attention to the news. And so they just check mark Joe Biden. But anybody who actually has listened to what Joe Biden's been saying, you'd be like, dude's not playing with a full deck of cards. And I'm not trying to be mean. He's an old dude. It's time to go lay down and relax. You served your country. I can respect that you probably shouldn't be running for president at this point. And I'll say the same thing about Elizabeth Warren. She's what, 70 something, 70 years old. So here's what ends up happening. You get all these Democrats riled up to be in favor of impeachment, hoping it's the right path. But you acknowledge the leftward lurch is a big problem. Now, I understand they're not completely the same thing. It may be possible that moderates are in favor of impeachment. That's what they're betting on. But I would bet on this. The people who are concerned about the leftward lurch, for the most part, are people who are paying attention and know it's happening in the first place. In that regard, when faced with two options, you have the bad orange man who speaks like a jerk and made inappropriate phone calls, and you have the 2020 Democrats who are saying health care for non-citizens. Elizabeth Warren's plan recently about Medicare for all and taxing the rich didn't account for non-citizens, of which the Democrats pledged they would give insurance to or government health care. I guess we'll make a bet. My bet is that when regular Ameri- when you assume the Americans are paying attention, okay, when their choice is Donald Trump, a good economy, he's kind of a he's he's kind of a bad guy. He's not that bad, like the way the media puts him. But man, we could do better, I think, in terms of personality and character. It's, it's complicated. I understand. I, I always try to make sure that I'm uh, uh, I, I I present my opinions on it in a more balanced way, like. I think the foreign policy stuff has been pretty bad. He did avoid war with Iran, and even Cenk Uyghur uh, 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 um, praised that. So credit where credit is due. But we got some personality issues. We got some behavioral problems. And so I'll put it this way. Regular, regular Americans who are paying attention, who know the leftward lurch is dangerous, they're also paying attention to Trump, thinking he's got attitude problems and he's a bad representative of our government. But take your pick. Grumpy, crass, boisterous, rude, potty mouth, but a good economy versus tepid, frail, old, senile, <laughs> and uh, far left and giving away your, your community resources to people who aren't citizens of this country. I'd be willing to bet any day of the week, regular Americans who know anything about politics would prefer either to not bet at all or bet on Trump. Now, who are you going to get? The far left will vote for whoever you put up because Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, for the most part, Bernie, 
that's candy. That's like that. That's a, that's the, that's cotton candy to the, to the far left. He's their guy. Okay, I can respect that, right, Bernie? There's a lot of there's a lot of really really good things about Bernie. I just disagree with him on on some character issues similar to Trump uh, and policy issues. Bernie is just too weak in my opinion. He endorsed Hillary. There's a lot of problems here, but the left they like it. Then you've got people who support Biden, not paying attention. Their vote won't. This 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 matters very very little. You know why? The people who say they would vote for Biden, you're never going to sway for one reason. They're not listening to you. They're not watching. They have no idea what's going on because if they did, they would see all the gaps in the insanity and be like, that dude's, we can't do that. So here's what we're left with. Nancy Pelosi simultaneously saying, get, 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 you know, get the centrists, the moderates on board to support impeachment, while also saying you must win the Electoral College to me, shows how she has no control. Impeachment is out of her hands. Everything's spiraling into the dumpster fire, and she's doing what little she can. Please don't go far left. We must win the Electoral College. But I'll tell you what, we'll read this now, okay? But people are going to choose a boorish old man who's lewd and lascivious and has all the character defects of a, of a comic book villain, but a good economy, a good economy. They're going to pick that. Sorry, that's just the way it is. I'm not trying to say Trump is a comic book villain. God, people are going to start saying, I have Trump derangement syndrome. I'm saying the people like Nancy Pelosi, who think Trump must be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. Okay, regular people don't care and they don't think that way. They're just like, eh, you know, I was in an Uber ride in Texas. I talked about this before. I went on a Glenn Beck show and the Uber driver said, man, you know, Trump's got a bad attitude, but, but the, you know, he's, things are kind of going okay. So, and there it is. I was talking to some, uh, some Hispanic friends of mine and they were just like, I don't know about any of that, but the economy is good. And I was like, what are you going to say? You can talk about Trump being a bad man, a bigot, all that stuff. doesn't matter. So now Pelosi, Pelosi 79. Whoa. There's a woman who's running in San Francisco. Her name is Agatha Basilar. And she is very much a young progressive, kind of like AOC. And I, uh, and she, she hot called me. I thought it was a cold call. Someone corrected me. No, because she got my name off of a Yang donor list. And she was talking about how she wants to primary Pelosi. And I said, you know, I got to be honest, man. I think I disagree a lot with your politics. I like the anti-war stance she has, very much like no regime change war stuff. That's, that's big for me. But the Green New Deal, it's buzzwords. It's ineffective. It's a problem. But I do think, I got to admit, I don't, I, it doesn't matter who it is. Okay, it, it kind of does. It kind of does. But for the most part, we need someone, be it her, a young upstart, to primary Nancy Pelosi. And that's what she's doing. So I'm not going to go so far as to donate because she does have a lot of the social justice and far left ideology stuff, which I think is substantially more dangerous. But man, Pelosi, you know what? I'm not saying this because, you know, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, I'm going to get in trouble. But seriously, the incumbents need to go. And, 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 and I'd be willing to accept a young upstart, you know, more far left progressive type if it means we get these incumbents out, these ineffective. And the craziest thing to me, I mentioned this in an earlier segment, I don't get why, why the Young Turks and other Bernie supporters aren't actually working with the Trump supporters on investigating the corrupt old establishment. Like Trump is not an establishment player. and We all know it. And you can think he's, a, he's, he's, he's got all of the character defects in the world and he's a comic book villain, like I was saying. Believe all that, fine. But he's pointing his investigators at the, the establishment, okay? The people you've railed on for years. And so did Trump. I don't want to say the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Not, not that much. But I'm wondering why. It's actually, it's actually kind of happening because I've seen people like Matt Taibbi, Glenn Greenwald, and others, these leftists who are kind of like, Hey, if, if Trump wants to turn the, the Department of Justice on the FBI and the CIA to weed out corruption, let it happen. Just, just sit back at the very least. The funny thing is Matt Taibbi mentioned, Matt Taibbi is like a kind of left-wing dude. He mentioned that Vindman, the guy who testified that he was, he was concerned Trump was going to subvert foreign pol- U.S. foreign policy, Matt Taibbi said, doesn't the president set foreign policy? And here I am laughing like, Matt Taibbi is not a conservative. But he's right. If Trump sets foreign policy, who's this guy to come out? And, and now he's working with establishment Democrats. You got to understand, you know, you, I, I understand these far left p- types like AOC supported impeachment. But come on, seriously, Trump is trying to investigate Biden. You want Biden, you want Bernie to win? Well, Biden's in the way and a lot of people are supporting him. So where, where are the progressive left saying like, bring it on Trump? 
Imagine what would happen if the Young Turks ran a segment saying, we want Donald Trump to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden. They'd be, Joe and Hunter Biden would be in trouble. And that opens the door for your, look, look, I'll put it this way, man. I'm not saying play political games. I'm saying if you're on the left and you think Biden is corrupt and you think these intelligence agencies have been corrupt for a long time, well, shouldn't you then work with those who are also concerned about that as well? And I guess, I don't know what you think, man, but I'll tell you what, if you really do want to beat Trump, well, then Biden is in the way because Biden is an old establishment candidate and he's taken a lot of that support and it's, and it's bad news across the board. If Bernie is going to win, Biden is, it, it, Biden's blocking him. Wouldn't it be important then if Biden really did wrong? I'm not saying he did. I'm not, I'm not entertaining any theories here. I'm just saying Trump is saying Biden did this. We've got a sworn statement from the Ukrainian prosecutor saying it's happening. Where's the progressive left saying, you know what? Go for it. Instead, they're like, no, Biden's okay. You, you want Biden to win? Now, Bill Maher, on the other hand, is more establishment. So anyway, you, you get the point. I, I bring up the, the Agatha Basilar because I'm just thinking you've got Biden. It's like, come on, dude. It's time to go. Nancy Pelosi, 79 years old. Come on, man. I can respect that you serve this country, but so I can't remember who said this, but we've got a minimum age for politics. I think Congress is like 25 presidency is 35. We don't have a maximum. Like, you know, it, it, like, I'm not trying to be a mean to senior citizens or anything like, but come on there in my neighborhood. When I was, when I was a lot younger, a 14 year old girl was killed by a, an old, a senior citizen driving and he wasn't paying attention, blew a stop sign, ran her over. And I give you a trigger warning on this one. After he hit her, he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what he hit. He backed up over her head. And that sparked a huge debate in my neighborhood about whether or not seniors should be driving. And, and South Park even did an episode about it. So at what point do we say 79 is too old? Why does San Francisco keep electing Nancy Pelosi? She has no control. Everything's falling apart. What she's saying makes no sense. So you know what? While I don't support Agatha Basilar, who's, who's primarying Nancy Pelosi in terms of most of her policies, I do support her in at least, at least being a young person who wants to come in and affect change and challenge Nancy Pelosi. Now, it's kind of contentious because a lot of people have said, no way, Nancy Pelosi is infinitely better than any far left. At the same time, I thought about that. I did. And I think that's not what it's about. Change happens. It might not be good change, but it's not for me to say, let's keep a 79 year old in office who's never faced a challenge, who's worth millions of dollars. No, 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 get these incumbents out. I, 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 would, I would much rather have a young person with new experiences challenging me on my ideas and me arguing against those ideas than an establishment corporate Democrat who's locked down the district. Bring on a new progressive candidate who I can disagree with, and that's fine. That's okay. We disagree if her district supports her. But Nancy Pelosi has locked this place down for a long enough time, and she's 79 years old. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Comment. Let me know what you think. A lot of people have said, no, no, help us. Come on, dude. It's San Francisco. Do you think after Nancy Pelosi retires, you're going to get a conservative? Never going to happen. But I do think it's about time we send a message to the incumbents in general. Think about what Trump represents. He's anti-establishment. He is not part of the same political class. And he came in and brought a lot of changes. Very similar to what the Tea Party was doing. I can't tell you who's the right person to, to, to bring about, but I can say somebody young and somebody young has stepped up. And for that, Agatha has my respect. We'll see. We'll see if she wins. But I, I got to admit, I can disagree with her. But I think Agatha, Agatha at this point would be a million times better than Nancy Pelosi. But I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not a far left progressive social justice identitarian type person. And I think I disagree with her a lot. But I will say this final thought. Nancy Pelosi represents nothing, nothing but corporate Democrats. At least when it comes to Agatha, she has ideas she follows and we can have a conversation and I can disagree and we can argue about it. Nancy Pelosi, what does she represent? duplicitousness, mixed up ideas, weakness. I'm sorry, man. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up in a few minutes. Stick around. I will see you all shortly.